Hey all right, I'm Chris from Techspurn and today we are reviewing the mighty Xiaomi 13 Pro. This weighty slab is going straight for the Galaxy S23 Ultra's jugular with its terrifyingly good camera tech, ultra fast charging battery and lots of other posh shiny bits. Hopefully for a UK asking price that's less than Samsung's gargantuan blow because bloody heck it wasn't cheap. Now I've been using the Xiaomi 13 Pro as my full-time smartphone for over a week ahead of the official launch, hence I'm not sure of the price just yet, I'll bung that down in the description once it's actually announced. But enough banging on, here's my full in-depth Xiaomi 13 Pro review and for more on the latest and greatest tech please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell, cheers! Now one of my first complaints of the Xiaomi 13 Pro I also directed at Samsung's S23 Ultra and that's the fact it's a big heavy sod. This 6.73 inch smartphone weighs a slightly mental 229 grams. Honestly, I feel like I'm getting a workout every time I pull this thing out of my pants. And on top of that, all of these glossy surfaces are incredibly slippery. There's bugger all grip to be had here. Although thankfully that camera bump sticks quite a way out of that arse end. So you can just kind of lodge your finger there, use it as a kind of ledge. But I did often find myself clutching this thing rather tight because I was absolutely terrified about dropping it. And if you happen to put this thing down on a sofa while you wander off for a beer refill or whatever else, you can 100% this thing to expertly glide towards the nearest crack and completely disappear down it by the time you return. The Xiaomi's mirrored back thankfully doesn't smudge up as much as I originally feared, it just needs the occasional bit of spit and polish. Although it does attract dust like Thorpe Park attracts obnoxiously loud horny teenagers. The design of this phone is your typical smart and elegant flagship affair. There's no bright colours here, no flare or anything to really catch the eye. And it also comes in a decidedly sensible choice of either black or white. I would have preferred a slightly slimmer camera bump and a definitely a bit of grip as well, but besides that it's hard to be cross or disappointed with the look and feel of the Xiaomi 13 Pro. And this handset is suitably rugged as well. Not only do you have an aluminium frame, but you've got a ceramic rear and a good bit of Gorilla Glass Victus up front as well. Although while that might be shatter resistant, sadly it's not particularly scratch resistant. So I'm really glad that Xiaomi has slapped a pre-installed screen protector on this thing. Oh, and like pretty much every other flagship out there, it's also IP68 water and dust resistant. Now no real surprises with the software, it's Android 13 with Xiaomi's MIUI 14 launcher drizzled on top, which is kind of like pouring chilli sauce on a prime bit of beef. You'll either think that it enhances the overall experience or just wish you had a plain slab of meat. Because after all, vanilla Android 13 is already juicy enough. And I've got to say my experiences so far with MIUI 14, it's not massively different to MIUI 13, or at least not yet. You can once again get a familiar Android style setup except with that separate iOS control center for all of your toggly bits which I still quite like. The overall style and presentation has changed up a bit but I haven't seen any of the new widgets or other bits that were promised with MIUI 14 here on the 13 Pro. Maybe that's because I'm reviewing it pre-release and those are going to be added in an update before it actually goes on sale, it's hard to say. The rest of the features are goldies but oldies like the video toolbox with its video filters and recording tools or the gaming mode which is absolutely gushing with useful stuff. And yeah, MIUI is still undeniably quite a dense launcher but it has improved significantly over the past few years and it's a lot more user friendly these days. I found absolutely no bugs whatsoever this past week, no issues with you know notifications trickling through, anything like that, so very few complaints Indeed, although I'm not aware of exactly how many years of security and OS updates it's going to get either. Again, that's something that will be announced at the launch. Good news is that Xiaomi seems to be turning a corner on that one, so I'm expecting at least three years of OS and security updates, especially as it's a mega billy big bollocks flagship. However, one minor moan is that this phone is once again overflown with crapware, not quite as bad as some previous models, but still not great. So you will want to delete some of this bollocks to tidy up the 13 Pro before you get stuck in. Like pretty much every other Android flagship and the iPhone and everything else that costs a lot of money, there's no micro SD memory card support here either, although thankfully my review model packs in a rather hearty 512 gigs of storage, so no real complaints there. And that in-display optical fingerprint sensor works beautifully even through the screen protector and even when your pinkies are a wee bit damp. And I did find the Fierce Unlock was a reliable, if less secure, backup option as well. There's no fancy 3D shenanigans or anything here. Now, as far as smartphone screens go, the Xiaomi 13 Pro's 6.73 inch OLED panel is right up there with the very best. It's a Quad HD Plus display, so you can expect pin sharp visuals when you're checking out your photos or streaming high res content. 
And while many flagships out there still only offer HDR10 Plus support, the Xiaomi 13 Pro can also spaff proper Dolby Vision content right at your face. The main difference between this screen and the regular Xiaomi 13 is the LTPO tech, so the refresh rate can veer from as little as 1Hz right up to 120Hz depending on what you're up to. At 120Hz, every action is creamy smooth, while at the lower refresh rates, well, that helps to preserve the battery life, and more on that in a bit. I have found the auto brightness can be a little bit hit and miss. For the most part, over the past week, it's been absolutely fine, but occasionally it can be a little bit too bright when I first wake up in the morning, so it practically blinds me when I'm lying there in bed debating on whether I should actually get up. And occasionally it can be a little bit too dim in the evenings as well, so we'll have to just occasionally manually fiddle with it. And when you max out that brightness, you will comfortably be able to use the Xiaomi 13 Pro even when the sun is in full-on mega bastard mode. Now the Xiaomi 13 Pro's display does curve ever so subtly at the edges, a bit more than the likes of the S23 Ultra. So that has led to a couple of responsiveness issues over the past week, especially as I've been clutching this phone so ruddy tight occasionally, haven't been able to press on an icon or have accidentally tapped a link that I didn't mean to. But overall, it's been very well behaved. We're talking literally a couple of occasions in a whole weeks of use, so it is still quite rare. You got yourself a pair of stereo speakers here, and again, it's hard to complain. They're pretty bloody loud when you boost up that volume without getting overly tinny. And if you've got a supported pair of headphones or a supported speaker, you can enjoy full proper 24-bit audio via Bluetooth 5.3, which is great news if you're streaming a bit of high fidelity action on the likes of Deezer or Tidal. Now pretty much all of the big blows of 2023 are powered by the same Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset, including this here Xiaomi 13 Pro. And once again, that means impeccable performance. The phone does occasionally get a bit warm when using it non-stop, especially when you're busting out that camera for lots of 8K video action, but certainly doesn't ever reach nut roasting levels. And if you want to run Genshin Impact or other memory guzzling games with the graphics settings boosted all the way up to max, well, you can still expect everything to keep running smoothly, even after a couple of hours with no break at all. Although that display isn't completely flat, I didn't have any issues with responsiveness and the visuals. And as I briefly banged on about earlier, the gaming mode is as dense and lovable as ever. That performance booster can help when the Xiaomi 13 Pro is under duress to maintain a sky-high frame rate. And you've got loads of other useful bits here, including a screen recorder and a handy timer, so you don't spend too long smashing gribblies right in their mush. As for the battery life, well, you've got a sizable 4,820 mAh capacity battery crammed inside of this very slippery, shiny chassis, and lots of great energy efficiency features as well to really help out. From that Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset to the LTPO display and various power saving features built into Android and MIUI, you can expect the Xiaomi 13 Pro to last as long as a super-sized gobstopper. I never saw less than 6 or 7 hours of full-on screen time, and that's with a hefty bit of camera usage and the occasional bit of gaming, lots of video streaming, and some audio streaming when the screen is hibernating too. And in even more good news, if you do find that you accidentally forget to charge the Xiaomi 13 Pro or it's running a bit low for whatever reason, you can quickly top it up in just a few minutes thanks to the 120 watt wide charging support and it's also got 50 watt wireless charging support. And so let's wrap up this Xiaomi 13 Pro review with a proper squint at the camera setup. Headlined here by Sony's whopping great 1 inch IMX989 sensor with ultra wide and telephoto shooters in backup. The frankly ridiculous size of that camera sensor means it can suck up loads of light even when things are really, really dim. And also, on top of that, you don't just have any bog-standard optical image stabilization here. Oh no, you get full-on hyper OIS. Huzzah! The end result is incredibly bright and detailed photos in low-light situations. The Xiaomi 13 Pro really can see in the dark, producing colorful pics with tonal details that the naked eye simply can't pick up. It's right up there with the Pixel 7 and the Galaxy S23 Ultra, coming somewhere just in between as far as colour accuracy is concerned. Just make sure that your subject is actually still in dim conditions because, as usual, you will end up with fuzzy results if they're not. When you venture out into daylight, you'll get beautifully sharp 12 megapixel snaps. Leica Vibrant is the recommended camera mode which, like Samsung smartphones, boosts those colours to make your photos look a little bit more lively. Otherwise, you can go with Leica Authentic if you want a more natural pick. It's entirely down to personal taste as to which you'll prefer, but I do like those poppy blue skies with the vibrant mode on. And this time, your subject doesn't need to worry about pausing. That shutter speed and processing time is so fast that it's basically instant. 
Even awkward dynamic range doesn't throw this blower to the point where you can almost shoot directly into the sun. If you want to get a wee bit closer to your subject without distracting them or just because they're a fair distance away, the Xiaomi 13 Pro also serves up a 50 meg telephoto lens with 3.2 times optical zoom and again OIS. It's not quite the S23 Ultra, but it's certainly useful, especially as tricky conditions like strong contrast rarely muff things up. And while you can actually zoom all the way into the 100 times level, things do get a wee bit abstract beyond about 30 times, at which point you might as well just use your imagination. That telephoto lens is also useful for portrait shots, and once again the Xiaomi 13 Pro excels here, even when your subject is bouncing around like a cooked up bunny. My test shots almost always came out clean with a lovely bulky effect in the background. And last up, there's a 50 meg ultra wide angle shooter serving up a 115 degree field of view. And it's pretty bloody good as far as ultra wides go, as long as you don't rely on it in dodgy lighting. And as always, you've got a healthy selection of bonus camera modes slapped here on the Xiaomi 13 Pro, including a pro mode, how very apt, which can capture 10 bit raw images. Swap to video and this handset can film some supremely sharp 8K footage, or you can always activate Dolby Vision mode at 4K 60fps. Although even without HDR switched on, the Xiaomi 13 Pro coped well with harsh lighting and my test clips boasted natural looking colours. Even at 8K, the stabilisation here is seriously good. Hyper OIS for the win, baby. You can zoom in and out smoothly if you want to without a particularly jarring transition when swapping to the likes of the telephoto lens while voices are clearly captured from all directions with minimal wind distortion, so overall, proper lush. And last up, that 32 megapixel selfie shooter can't quite see in the dark like the rear camera, but you do have a slightly startling screen flash mode to help out. Otherwise, in more ambient environments, the Xiaomi 13 Pro still pumps out a good snap without too much invader noise. Brighter backgrounds will be completely blown out, but your mug stays perfectly in focus, and I found that my skin tone, or lack thereof, was quite accurately captured. And hey, if you want to shoot a bit of vlog action using the Xiaomi 13 Pro, well you can do that at full HD resolution, sadly no 4K action for that front facer. But again, I found this phone was absolutely perfect for Skyping, Zooming, WhatsApping, whatever else. And that right there, my lovelies, is my full frank final Xiaomi 13 Pro review. And yes, it is big, and yes, it is bloody heavy, but if you can put up with that, well you'll be rewarded with a feature-packed super-powered blower that boasts some incredibly versatile camera tech. It's certainly one of my favorite handsets right now. It's a strong rival to the likes of Samsung's Galaxy S23 Ultra, so I'm really excited to see how much it will cost here in the UK, because if it's a few hundred pounds cheaper, then frankly, it's a no-brainer. Unless you're particularly swayed by the S Pen stylus, that is. But anyway, that's my thoughts on the Xiaomi 13 Pro. It'd be great to hear your own thoughts down in the comments below. Are you tempted, are you swayed, or do you reckon Samsung has the better deal overall? Please do poke subscribe, ding that notifications bell, and have yourselves a really great rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.